People, including horse owners, often make the mistake of assuming that because a horse might appear intelligent, it will respond to situations in a similar way to humans. It won't. And that misguided assumption is the single biggest mistake people make at rescues. Jim Green takes us through the basics of horse behaviour. Horses are prey animals. Their main emotion is fear. When frightened, their first instinct is to flight, to run away and return to their herd. If they are cornered and can't run away, then they are likely to fight, and they are equipped with several potentially lethal weapons. Unlike humans, they tend not to view the arrival of the fire and rescue service or the police or a vet they'd never met before as a positive thing. Our arrival can potentially stress them out even more. The first thing to be aware of is the flight zone. At this point, the animal will be aware of you, but relatively comfortable with having you around. Any closer, and it will be very alert to your presence and might start to worry. But here, at this point, the horse will perceive you as a threat and take action. Flight or fight. Be aware also of the visual field of the horse. It can't see you if you're right behind it or right in front. Approach the horse on the left side at the shoulder. Never have two people approaching the horse, one on each side. It's extremely threatening to the horse. Once you've approached the horse, keep it calm by speaking in low rhythmic tones. Move slowly but confidently and keep your breathing slow and even. Horses are good at picking up human anxiety. Avoid direct eye contact, but make sure the horse is aware of your presence. Don't try to sneak up on it. Never forget, horses don't think, they react. The important thing to remember at an animal rescue is that there are no safe places around an animal in distress. There are just safer places. And by using proper procedures and safe working practices, we can limit the amount of danger involved. One of the things we need to be wary of is the kicking zone. And standing this side from the spine side is probably the safer place. Take an arc with my crook from the front of the horse all the way around here. That's the area that we want to avoid working in. And we wouldn't want firefighters placing themselves in between the legs. In order to achieve that, we use the heavy limb crook in order to pass things to each other, place the straps around the body, and also to lift the limbs. That means that we can control the area as best as possible to try and maintain a safe environment at all times. Another area to be mindful of is the headbutt area. A horse will naturally want to bring its head up to gain balance, and therefore the person who is maintaining control of the head must be very aware of this. As Jim said earlier, only 20% of an effective rescue is about having highly technical equipment. Most of what the animal rescue specialists use is deceptively simple. Here, Jim and Anton Phillips take us through their basic toolkit. What's absolutely crucial on animal rescue is for everybody to be wearing the correct personal protective equipment, and the helmet is a crucial part of that equipment. We recommend that uh, everybody, including the vets, the firefighters, and any members of the public, in the immediate scene have hard hat protection. One essential piece of our equipment is the head collar. Uh, we use this to control the head, uh, control the head particularly of a horse, and if you control the head, you control the horse. With Animal Rescue, what we're trying to achieve is a rescue method which is the simplest and lowest tech possible for the situation, because that's going to be in the best interests of the animal and in the safety of the people that are around it. And to be honest, 95% of the time, we rescue animals in Hampshire using two five metre strops, two general purpose ropes, a tool called a strop guide, which we use for putting underneath the animal in order to pull the strops underneath a recumbent horse, particularly when it's in a muddy environment, to save us from actually having to dig underneath it. And of course, we've already mentioned the heavy limb crook. The five metre strops enable us to manoeuvre a horse forwards, backwards and sideways, and also round obstacles. Very, very simple. What we're trying to avoid is pulling on the legs and the head of the animal because those are the vulnerable parts. And what we want to use is the large cross-sectional area around its torso to take the pull and then the eyes of the straps go back between the legs and then uh, the, the general purpose rope is placed through them. And then we can have a number of people, uh, however many firefighters we need, doing the manual techniques. And of course, the heavier the animal, the more firefighters we will utilise. Of course, while it's wholly acceptable and appropriate to skid and manoeuvre an animal across the ground for short distances, sometimes the ground conditions may not be conducive, or we may want to move them 
a distance that's really too far for the animal's benefit. So what we want to do is utilise something like this, which is our rescue glide. It's a plastic sledge really for horses and we can utilise this uh, for a horse that needs to be transported across roadways, tracks or across long distances of unstable ground to awaiting transportation or to a place of safety. This is a riot shield that we've uh, commandeered from the police and uh, it enables us to get right up close to an animal to carry out any sort of rescue procedure, particularly in an entrapment, something like an animal trapped in a gate where we would need to get fairly close to apply a head restraint or to operate cutting equipment. There are many scenarios where, we, where it is not possible to actually just drag out an animal, so we have to lift an animal. Now we've developed a very simple technique using two very large, wide cross-sectional area straps, one to go just behind the front legs and one to go just in front of the back legs. Because an animal is likely to spill, in other words spill forwards primarily, we'll put these anti-spill straps on as well. Um, these spill straps will go on front and back and they are of course quick release. This is called the spreader bar, um, or the part of, which is part of the Hampshire quick release system. Um, we've developed this in conjunction with two items of equipment called sea catches and they will release under load and with no load. So in other words, if an animal is picked up and, it, and as it's picked up with a crane or a tractor's four end loader, it can be picked up and in theory it's under load, it can be steered, put down onto the ground and if all of the load comes out of the straps, it can then be released. If the animal decides to try and run away, it can equally be released. Uh, this is absolutely critical to the health and safety and the success of an incident where you have to lift a live animal. This is the Downer Cow Harness Mark II, which is a medical suspension device for horses and cattle. It enables an animal to be picked up and suspended for up to two hours so that a vet can carry any veterinary procedures required. So those are the tools of the animal rescue team's trade. Let's look at how they are used in practice. What you're about to see are demonstrations of a few basic techniques. These were filmed on a recent training course for vets. So most of the time, these aren't experts performing these manoeuvres. Please don't watch this film and assume you are now equipped to rescue a horse. These techniques take practice. We recommend that you get yourself onto a course. All the website addresses and phone numbers you need will appear at the end of this DVD. In this example, we're using the strop guide to pull the straps under a recumbent animal. The heavy limb crooks are then used to lift limbs and manoeuvre the straps. This avoids anyone having to step into the kicking zone. The procedure demonstrated is known as a sideways skid. However, all the techniques are adaptable and can be used for moving large animals around in any environment, especially in a clinic or hospital. But they do need practice and very good communication within the team. Here we're doing a similar thing, passing the straps safely through the animal's legs to enable us to perform a forward skid. It's important to assign someone to remain in control of the head at all times. During the stropping process, the head person may assist in keeping the horse down by kneeling on the neck. When using a backward skid, it's important to manage the tail by tucking it under the strop. Trailer rescues present us with additional challenges because we are working in a confined space. But we use the same techniques and basic equipment, just maybe with a different procedure. Here what we're doing is getting control of the animal's head by using a long handled hook which can be drawn in from the back and released at range. Now we're applying a backward drag using the same strop guide and heavy limb crooks. But this technique involves using the straps in a manner that avoids getting into the confined space or working from the spine side. For this we use a longer strop so that we can do everything at long range. We may have to work to get it around the animal but it is still a safer procedure than entering the box. Now we place the rescue glide behind the horse so that when it comes out of the box it will go onto a ground conditions that are conducive for skidding. Here we can apply the sideways skid in a more realistic environment. The ditch poses more challenging scenario because it's more of a confined space. Firefighters may need to prepare the scene by cutting vegetation or taking the shoulder off of the bank side. This requires teamwork and communication and in particular clear direction from the instant commander. A horse that's been trapped on its side in a cold wet ditch for a long period of time will suffer muscle damage and therefore when we get the animal out often it cannot get up. Rolling a horse over stimulates its flight mechanism 
An important aspect of this procedure is the person on the head needs to be confident and competent. They will duck under the strop and pull the horse's head into its abdomen to enable it to get up in the most natural way. It is often appropriate to lift an animal out of the entrapment by crane or telehandler. Lifting does present added dangers, however, to horse and rescuers, and therefore chemical restraint methods will almost always be required. Demonstrated here is a rescue harness that is simple to apply and can be released immediately at range once the horse is down. Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service attend many incidents in the boggy conditions around the New Forest where it's just not possible to get close enough with a vehicle and lifting equipment. In conditions like these, we use 10 meter inflatable rescue paths to work around the animal and then skid them along it until we reach stable ground. The techniques you have just seen were demonstrated by vets on a beaver rescue and emergency medicine course. We can't stress enough that these take practice and need to be correctly taught. None of what you have just seen is in any way a substitute for attending an animal rescue course.